five million hogs, six million ducks, seven million barrels of parts, sir. We had eight million piles of old nanny ghost tiles and a hog of the Irish Rover. There was Al Mickey Coot, who played hard on his flute when the ladies blew. Hey, folks, Revolutionary Brewer here. We're back with another Saturday afternoon uh, beer review. This is take two, so I already opened the beer. Today we're going to be reviewing the one everyone's been talking about, the Canadian Northern Lights Ale. This is one that's made with uh, fresh grains and fresh hops boiled in. Um, I've already actually poured it, so I've drank a little bit of it, so let's top it up and uh, let's get right down to it. So look at that, that's a beautiful, just a regular ale, as you can see, beautiful head on it, it's just nice and white and creamy. Uh, beer's a little cloudy, just chill haze, that's all that's going on there. It's been in the fridge for a couple weeks, but it's still a little hazy, it's okay, it doesn't affect the taste. Anyways, uh, like I said, this is my first crack at one of these uh, kits that you got to kind of put together from, I guess it's not scratch, but I mean it's got the fresh grains and you got to boil in the hops. This is my first attempt, so... Let's see how it turns out. Oh, man, that's good. Whoa, that's good beer. You know, I was always... I always said I'm not. I'm probably not going to step up the uh, brewing game that much because I'm happy with the canned kits. I'm happy with the beer it produces. But for a little bit extra work, this is a nice treat to throw in. This is a beautiful tasting beer. Um tastes pretty much like just an average ale. There's nothing, uh... Oh yeah, that's good. There's nothing out of the ordinary, but I'm not sure what kind of hops were included in the package, but it has a slight, uh, citrus taste to it. Almost, um, almost a grapefruity taste. Uh, maybe you guys that, um, had a little more experience with a different kind of hops could let me know, but, uh... I mean, this is a good beer. So let's get into how I made it. It's a little bit, like I said, more involved than your uh, regular kit. Uh, so I started out uh, with the steeping grains. I steeped them in water. I think it was uh, 155. Did it for about 40 minutes. Then I added uh, one pound of uh, malt extract. And what I did is I started boiling in my hops. I just added one pound of malt extract, boiled in the hops, and... Uh, let the main boil go for 45 minutes. That was the bittering hops. And then there were finishing hops as well. For the finishing hops, I added them with 10 minutes of the boil left to go. And uh, after that, I just went ahead and added the rest of the malt extract in. Um, there was also two pounds of uh, high malt glucose, which I added in later. So I know it's a little confusing, but to run it down, the basic ingredients were six pounds of uh, liquid malt extract, two pounds of the uh, liquid glucose, uh, there was a big bag of uh, steeping grains, and there were f starting hops, or bittering hops, I should say, and finishing hops. Now, I don't know what type of grain it was. It didn't say on the kit, and I don't know what kind of hops they were. But, I mean, these hops, they do produce like a grapefruit sort of flavor. Um, like I said, look at this beer. It's a really good beer. Oh, yeah, that's terrific. So anyone who's thinking about maybe you've done a whole bunch of kits and you just want to try something a little different, this is a little more time consuming, I'm not going to lie, it's it's just a little bit more time consuming, but the beauty of it is you can leave it on the stove and, you know, you know watch the football game or throw some darts or mess around on the computer, whatever you want to do. Just have to keep a little eye on it that it doesn't boil over because... Um, when you are boiling this stuff, it'll hit something, I think it's called the hot break, and it will just, it almost looks like a big milkshake foaming up and it'll just boil over. It makes a terrible mess. Luckily with this one, uh, it didn't, but uh, just keep a little eye on it. Once the hot break's finished, you're pretty good. Uh, so once again, I, I mean, if you're in the Maritimes, I think all the Noble Grape stores have these box kits now. Um, I actually have, I like this one so much, I actually bought another one. It's, um, it's a honey brown ale, and it actually comes with uh, fresh Nova Scotia honey, so it should be interesting. But uh, like I said, if you want to step it up just a little bit, this is really easy to make. Like I said, this is my first attempt, and the beer is terrific, no question. I'm going to give this a solid 4 out of 5, a 4 out of 5. If you like, uh, it's a full-flavored ale, no question about that. It's, uh, it's very good, though. 
Uh, so coming up next, what do we have coming up next? I have a beer that was inspired by uh, Craig, actually, of Craig Tube. I seen him, he made this uh, brown sugar lager, and I just, I kept getting around to trying it myself, and I kept, uh, you know, you'd get a different kit. There's so many kits, when you're brewing, there's so many different kits you want to try, but I finally got around to making the uh, brown sugar lager. It's going to be the Cooper's Lager, made with brown sugar, and uh, it's bottled, ready to go, so that review will be coming up shortly. I'm really excited. To, I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see how it turned out. I know uh, Craig's look delicious, so I'm going to give her a try and see what happens. Anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, keep on brewing. Like I said, uh, if you're in the Maritimes, check out the Noble Grape. They got tons of different uh, varieties of these box kits. You can get dark beers, light beers, uh, reasonably priced, and everything's right there for you. Everything you need. Anyways, uh, keep on brewing, guys. Cheers, and I will see you next time.